All right, here's the MIDAC implementation of the circuit. I have a 3.3K resistor added in parallel with the 2.2K just for purposes of demonstration. So remember to take that out for your own circuit. I have the 5 volt source connected through the 100 ohm resistor and the first switch. I have the 100 microfarad capacitor with analog input 0 monitoring the voltage across the capacitor. Don't forget the analog ground down here. The second push button switch is located right there. Let's take a look at the layout on the breadboard. Again, I have the modification just for demonstration purposes here with that extra parallel resistor. There's my five volt connection. There is analog input zero monitoring the capacitor. 100 microfarad capacitor is uh, also connected to ground. Make sure you observe the polarity of the electrolytic capacitor. Mine has an indicator for the negative side, which is grounded. There's my first switch and the second switch. Feel free to substitute a wire jumper for each of those switches if needed. All right, the oscilloscope will be the main tool for observing the capacitor voltage, which again is available on analog input zero. We'll just go with the default oscilloscope settings for now. What I'm doing is pressing switch one to charge the capacitor up to five volts. Both switches are open and then I press the second switch and then that discharges the capacitor towards ground. So I'll press the first switch again and press the second switch to discharge the capacitor. Now let's go ahead and set up the oscilloscope to use the full vertical range for best accuracy. I'll change this to 500 millivolts per division and put the offset at min minus 5. That way the entire oscilloscope vertical range is set to 0 to 5 volts. Again, uh, looking at the discharging capacitor right there. Now if I increase the time base setting so we have more milliseconds per division, we can start to perceive the uh, characteristic exponential decay curve for that capacitor voltage. That's charging by pressing switch one. Now to capture the discharge, let's trigger the scope specifically on the falling edge and we'll set the trigger point to 4.9 volts. And I'll scoot this back so we can see more of what happens after the trigger point, which is now located right here. Now at this point, what I'm doing is pressing switch one, releasing it, and then pressing switch two. You might have to try this a few times in order to get it to work. But as soon as you see the trace, go ahead and hit the stop button. Now I'm going to place a cursor at the 10% voltage mark, 10% of the initial voltage of 5 volts is 0.5. And so I'm watching the voltage reading right there for the cursor. Actually, I'll, use, I'll set that to the 90% mark. I'll set this one to the 10% mark. So I'm looking for 0.5 volts for the second cursor. Now, once you have those points established, look right here. For this particular circuit, 1.36 seconds is approximately what you should expect for your own measurement setup. Also notice you can see the initial voltage looking like a constant, and we see the nice exponential decay of voltage.